Let's start the program today by talking about cooking oil. Which cooking oil do you use? Is it refined or olive, mustard oil or ghee? Are you using olive oil because you think it's going to lower your cholesterol levels? Or ghee, since that seems to be back in fashion all of a sudden? Right, there was a time when ghee was linked with heart attacks. Now ghee is understood to be bringing down the glycemic index. Now, what is the truth about oils? Which oils should be paired with what food? That's what we'll be taking a look at on the program today. So let's start with an explainer. The TBC team spoke with experts extensively and we have put together a chart for you and a top five one that will explain and perhaps answer all your questions. Let's start by giving you the top five things to remember when deciding on oils. Number one to look at is the smoking point of the oil. Now, just like liquids have a boiling point, oils also have a smoke point. Unlike water, which starts boiling at a certain temperature, oils catch fire and burn when heated beyond their smoke point. Now, when this happens, that's when harmful release of chemicals really takes place. So, you, uh, so, you know, for sautéing and shallow frying, you have to use a oil which has a low smoke point. But if you're deep frying, be careful to use one which has a higher smoke point. Mm, okay, and the omega-2 to omega-6 ratio, that's point number two. So according to the National Institute of Health, omega-3 fatty acids are what are essential fats and they're the ones that the body cannot produce on its own. They play a very crucial role in brain functioning, in inflammation reduction around your body and of course heart health. That's when you hear about them the most. Now, omega-3s are known to help lower the triglyceride levels in your body. Mm. They reduce the risk of heart disease. They may also aid in preventing and in managing different conditions. So, for example, you have rheumatoid arthritis, depression. Who recommends an omega-6 to omega-3 ratio of 4 is to 1 to maintain optimal health? That's right. So, that is the one that you should follow according to the WHO guidelines over there. But number 3 on the list when looking at oils is looking at the fats in that oil. And there are four kinds that you should be looking at. There is saturated fat, there is SFA that is called, there is mono or unsaturated fat or fatty acids over there, there is poly unsaturated fatty acids and there is trans fats and don't worry, you don't need to know all of them. What you need to understand as a basic structure here is that every oil has a mix of all four. What differs is the ratio. Meaning butter and ghee are higher in concentration of saturated uh, fats. Olive oil and mustard have higher concentration of MUFA, which you know can be actually better for you. While seed oils have a higher concentration of F or PUFA, beg your pardon. So a healthy mix of oils is what is required in our diets. So you should look at one where MUFA is slightly more. Then there's the question of refined versus unrefined oils. So you have refined processes including bleaching, deodorizing. They can significantly mm. reduce the levels of these beneficial micronutrients that are present in your oils. You've heard of cold pressing and unrefined oils. Those are the oils that retain higher amounts of these micronutrients. That's why you'll have a bottle advertising that it's cold press oil. Uh, this is when it's compared to refined oils. That's right. And number five on the list, and this is perhaps the most important one, do not reheat or reuse your oils. Reheating and reusing oils can have several negative health impacts, not just cancer. Remember, as the oil breaks down with heat, it can release harmful toxins, become more acidic. And these toxins can, can irritate your digestive system, potentially contribute to chronic diseases as well. So that's Ajka Gyan, the top five points that you need to remember when you're looking at oils. But of course, you'll have questions, so do we. So we have two very interesting guests for you. Let's start with the first one. Priya Nagwani joins us now. She's a nutritionist and certified weight management coach. Good morning, Priya. Thanks so much for joining us here on The Breakfast Club. I want to first start uh, by asking you, what is your verdict? What is your go-to oil in your kitchen? Because that should give us a cue. All right, we we'll look to I'm not sure if. Yeah, I'm not sure if Priya can hear us. Do you? Right. So, so while we... Yeah. 
do you have a particular oil that you like using a certain way before you were researching this entire segment? Is there something that you've learned with this? I have read too much about <laughs> oils in the past couple of uh, days to sort of understand this, but I think I'm sort of gravitating more towards having oils which are cold pressed and mm. using a variety of them. So matching the right food with the right oil maybe and a huge ghee fan. I come from North India, so you can understand. The price point is always, when I see with cold pressed oil bottles, the, the price point is always what scares me, especially with olive oil, coconut oil. I always in my head for some reason think, cold pressed is going to equal more expensive. Is that something that's, that's true That's a the good question. That's a good question, but remember a cold pressed oil is mm. an oil which is highly concentrated, so you don't use that much. It's like having a pure ingredient, but using little of it mm. because it's very strong in flavor. Mm. So a smaller amount would hopefully mean that even though it's priced higher, it'll go a longer way. All right, let's go over to our guest who is through with us, Sona. Hi Priya, I hope you can hear us this time around. Hi Sonal, thank you for having me. Hi. Great, great. Priya, we were just chit-chatting before we got you on on what our favourite oil is, but I want to get the verdict from a certified nutritionist over there. What do you think, which is the best oil and your go-to oil in the kitchen? So Sonal, there isn't one best oil, I would say, uh, for optimal benefits. I think uh, you you have to decide the oil basis, the requirement basis, the kind of cooking you're doing, the kind of health benefits you need, um, also the flavor profile that you prefer and the flavor that goes with the food that you're cooking. So there isn't one best oil, but yes, there are some oils which are very high in benefits like olive oil, coconut oil, mustard oil, etc. that you should be in including in your diet but yes definitely it depends on what kind of cooking you want to do and information that you shared about smoke points that is very important to have because that will help you decide which oil to use when so have a variety and uh, include um, a lot of oils in your diet I mean there is no one best you know that you can have so Priya so, coming in uh, from Delhi here with this next question Tell us, you're saying we need a variety of oils then in our cooking. If we're on a budget, what should that variety look like? How many should we try to spend for? Variety, 100% yes, we should include variety in our uh, variety of oils because uh, uh, different oils have different nutritional profiles, right. different fatty acid profiles and different kind of antioxidants that they give. Now, uh, in the Indian context, uh, have a variety like mustard oil. Um, I would rate mustard oil even higher than olive oil because it is one-fifth the cost. It has good amount of monounsaturated fatty acids. It has good amount of antioxidants um, and it is preferable it is suitable for high heat cooking so one is that um, yeah yeah and so, ghee definitely uh, again you should include because yeah hmm. no no go ahead go ahead ghee and mustard clearly those two are the ones no. that you say can okay. work well so, and also yes. conventionally has been part of our cooking system as well. Correct. But let me throw in the next question that perhaps uh, helps people get more, you know, practical solution here. Is there some sort of oil and food pairing that one must be looking at? Uh, cooking particular kind of fru uh, food that sort of helps with better nutrient absorption when, you know, sort of married to that oil? Definitely. Um, so, um, see, for regular cooking of sabzis, you know, for high heat cooking, uh, medium to high heat cooking that we have for Indian cooking, you can have mustard oil because it will not go rancid when you heat it at a, at a higher uh, smoke, because it has a higher smoke point. Now, uh, for parathas, etc., you can use ghee, but not while cooking it, you know, apply it uh, later when you, when you have it on your plate. Um, use your butter, olive oil, sesame oil etc for your omelets because it has low to medium heat cooking uh, drizzle olive oils etc cold pressed uh, oils on your salads because it will give that uh, flavor to your salads as well as you know it will match with the smoke point requirements of that oil so this way you can have a variety of oils and pair it with the foods uh, in a manner which is suitable as per their smoke points and as per the flavors as well 
Priya, can you also tell us, this is a bit of a naughty question, but when it comes to reheating oils, reusing oils, we, we say we can't do that. Is that a definite no? Is that, especially with vegetables oils, sometimes they say that, yeah, this kind of oil you can use, you can reheat. But do you say no, absolute no on all reuse? See, um, uh, the lesser the better because what happens is when you reheat the oil the chemical structure in the oils changes um, you know there is a formation of trans fats uh, and uh, you know and some free radicals so which is inflammatory and you know is linked to chronic diseases so better to not reheat the oil in case you have a lot of oil left then you can use it just for sauteing or you know or for your regular subsidies but not for long time cooking um, I would suggest when Whenever you are craving for say a deep fried food, right, have a smaller kadhai which has small amount of oil in it, so that you know there is no, there isn't much left for the use for use for using later. Mm. So that way, I think I do this that you know I use smaller tarka kadhai and you know whatever I want to deep fry, I can do that and I don't have a lot of mm. oil left with uh, me to use it. Um, other thing is you know that there is nutrient loss as well. You know there are antioxidants, there are vitamins which are heat sensitive. Now you when when you keep reheating the oil there isn't much nutrition left in the oil uh, seed oils I would say don't have a lot of nutrition they are just edible oils they I would call them and um, they are anyway you know treated at high temperatures etc so do not reheat them at all and try to avoid mm. reheating as much as possible that's very practical advice and Priya, I think my favourite two takeaways were that the, the heroes are already in our kitchen. Mustard, oil, ghee, these are all already commonly accessible. Correct. Thank you for telling us so much. Thank you for joining us this morning on TBC. Now, you know, on TBC, we like to take you from the experts into the kitchen, behind the scenes. That's right. So you heard from the nutritionist telling you what is the right composition, what you should right. keep in mind. But I'm sure you're thinking what dish to patch if I'm making an omelette. Is she saying use ghee or should I use butter? What should I do? We had these questions as well. So we dialed up Lakhan Jithani. Uh, he is a chef and over uh, at Mizo, one of Mumbai's top restaurants over here. Let me just walk up to him. He's right here with us in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. Lakan, how are you doing? I'm amazing. How are you? So Mizo is a restaurant that talks about clean eating, talks about lesser ingredients, the better. So I said, Lakan, why don't you teach us a little bit about what oil to pair with what? 100%. So here you are with that uh, entire sort of lineup. Should we start with everybody's uh, favorite olive oil? 100%. Oil of the season? <laughs> oil of the season, oil of the century, huh. I would say. Uh, olive oil is really, really good for salad dressings, as our nutritionist also said. Mm. Uh, it, it goes through good processes to make this oil, so it doesn't go through a lot of factory processes. So you can use this oil to dress your salads, uh, even, uh, you know, for light stir frying. Olive oil, not extra virgin olive oil can be used. Extra virgin mm. olive oil can be used to make dressings for your salads. Right, so extra yeah. virgin, do not put that on heat at all is what not you're saying. Not at all, yes. Okay, okay. So yes. the next one here on the list and uh, uh, our viewers have that. Uh, Toya is also over there. She'll be full of questions as well. So we'll toss to that in just a bit. But let's talk about uh, the next one over here, coconut. Yes. And this one you have is cold pressed. Correct. So it's great to apply, it's great to eat. It yes. also is used extensively in South India, no? Uh, it is used in every part of India, I would say, not just South India, mm. extensively in South India because we produce a lot of coconuts over there, mm. right? Uh, coconut oil has a high smoking point. It is extremely nutritious. You can use it in all your curries, dosas, idlis to make a tarka. And a pro tip would be you can use it in baking to make cakes. Oh, nice. It is highly flavorful. Yeah. It imparts a really good flavor, you know. Huh. Coconut mango is excellent. Yeah. Coconut chocolate Brownies is also, excellent. Yeah. Yes, yes, 100%. Nice. Yes. Okay, let's move to ghee then. We all uh, love it. Uh, there was a generation that was told oh. this will lead to heart attacks. Now yeah. we thankfully have data which says sugar is the one that does it, not fat. Not fat. But how to use ghee better in your kitchen? So in my house, we would use uh, ghee on almost everything now. Mm. Uh, earlier, there were these myths that you cannot use ghee while pan frying or sauteing. Mm. But if you want to lightly pan fry or lightly saute, if you want to butter your bread, but a light heat, ghee is fine. 
butter is fine as well. Dosa it is, is a very high smoke point. Yes, two fifty, two hundred to two fifty, mm. I suppose. Mm. Uh, butter is also two hundred to two fifty. But mm. uh, some people are uh, lactose intolerant, so the ones who are lactose intolerant can use ghee. Mm. Ghee should be put on rotis. It helps uh, reduce uh, your glycemic index. Mm. It has an extremely nice nutty flavor. It can yeah. be used in baking or uh, on almost everything. Uh, the Western world has adopted uh, ghee now and are using ghee in coffee, yeah. in uh, different different yeah. things. Yeah. yeah, it it is highly nutritious, full of saturated fats, which is good for our body now. Uh, and there's yeah. a reason why dadis and nannies would make a tarka out of it 100%. and always top it up. Correct. Right. Correct. Let's so, move uh, yeah. to the next one. This is mustard. Yes. It's you know when we uh, when we were setting up the table before the show, we opened and there was a whiff. Here in the studio as well. That's yes. how strong this oil is. Yes. But again, this traditionally used in the western part of the country. A lot Correct. of Bengali cooking. Correct. A lot of really flavorful march is Correct. made out of this. Yes. But anything beyond that that we can also utilize it with. So mustard oil, a hundred percent with fish, is outstanding. Uh, the north of India would use it in pickles, making a lot of their pickles. My personal pro tip uh, to use mustard oil mm. would be if you're making a bengan ka bharta at home, ah. just replace your oil with a little bit of mustard Good oil, man. and you're going to be in for a surprise. Yeah. Again, mustard oil, like coconut oil, has a lot of flavor inside it, yeah. so it pairs well with some dishes and does not pair well with some dishes. Mm. Uh, but it is extremely flavorful, extremely healthy, way better than vegetable oil mm. currently. So please go ahead and use this. Nice, Keep nice. And this is the ways. last one on the table, and this is yes. sesame oil. So traditionally, this would be used in a lot of Chinese cuisine. Chinese again, something that you use in a big wok with high heat, right? Yes. But what else then? So uh, again, this one is a cold pressed sesame oil. Hmm. It has a lot of flavor. Hmm. Uh, apart from using it from on the wok because it has a high smoking capacity, uh, today I would love to use it in soups. Take a couple of drops of you know sesame oil, just put it in your soup and mix it up. It's going to give a lot of robust flavor, yeah. uh, amazing whiff, you know. In your vegetable soup, uh, in the restaurant we use it for to make a miso soup. We would add little sesame oil, so it gives mm. the soup a nice nutty uh, flavor and a whiff as well. Yeah. yeah. So, so soups, yeah, after yeah. all this conversation on yeah. food is dying to yeah. ask a question. Let's yeah. let's go to her and get that one as well. Toya, yeah, go ahead. Chef, tell us. We were just speaking right now to a nutritionist who was saying that mustard and ghee are the two saviors in your kitchen. In the restaurant, are, do, are they the two that you're using the most? Are you using others? What uh, are you finding? consumers like so uh, I am using a lot of ghee in my restaurant not uh, too much of mustard oil mm, because yeah. we are an Asian yeah. restaurant so lesser of use of mustard mm. but a lot of ghee we've uh, started supplementing now you know when we do our bows or something and we used to use butter mm. but I've started using ghee recently I'm extremely extremely fond of ghee the flavor it has the nutty flavor it has and the fact that it can yet hold heat up to 200 to 250 degrees centigrade makes it a good stir frying option as well in today's day, age and day of time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ghee with uh, Japanese food. If you want to try more of that, you'll have to go to <laughs> Chef's Restaurant and Lakan's Restaurant and understand that. But for now, thank you so much for educating us uh, on all the different kinds of thank oil. So this has been lovely. On that note, we're going to slip into a quick break. You go fetch what's in your pantry. We'll see you on the other side.